Well, let me ask about this, like in relation to the extreme ends of the parties. Like on your side, some QAnon nut job, and on your side, some you know blue-haired girl walking around a college campus. <laughs> not, not, not. What's wrong <laughs> like, with that? But well, what I'm saying, there's nothing wrong with it. I I dyed my hair pink one time. You know, it's okay. We all make mistakes. Today, we are coming together from different backgrounds. One person from the left, one person from the right, me from the center. And we're going to take seven minutes to come up with solutions for political topics that we're going to be given. Hopefully, it works well. Really working towards solutions, and I hope this is like a, an example for the way conversations can go as the political spectrums come together. My name is Sadia and I'm a liberal. Well, I was born in New Orleans, raised in Houston, um, grew up in a conservative family, started studying things on my own and I realized that I don't know if I actually identify with very many conservative values. I, I think the misconception is that I'm some bra burning feminist that just wants absolute anarchy. I don't know <laughs> what that's supposed to be. Sadia. Hunter, nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Good timing. <laughs> All right. My name's Hunter and I'm a moderate. The area I live in, it's a pretty purple area, a lot of mixed beliefs in there. So I grew up interacting with a lot of people coming from the extremes of both sides and in the center. Being more in the center, it makes it a thousand times harder to have political conversations with basically anyone. Nowadays, everyone I run into is the furthest activist on the left or the right. Hi. Good, Hunter. Marcus. Saudi, nice to meet you. My name is Marcus, I'm a conservative. Most of my friends growing up in a black neighborhood, we we're all left-leaning Democrats, but when I started learning more about the right, it just kind of vibed with me. I usually try not to be uh, talk politics with strangers, and my friends, they know I'm right-leaning, so they just think I'm an idiot, or even with the racist white people, I'm like, no, they're not that bad. Most black Republicans, we really want to use our right-leaning values to help our neighborhoods, because we come from those black neighborhoods where it has been a high poverty rate or low education. That's why we believe in school choice, less government. Let's take the first one. Let's take the first one. All right. All righty, how do we as a nation continue to fight racism and inequality? Big question right off the bat. We all the same, we all bleed red. You gotta work the same thing. Just for now, it's still always about the color of your skin, your sex, or whatever. It's like, can we just be American, just be countrymen? So I think, personally, that um, not everybody is being seen or heard right now. That's why not everybody is feeling that they're Americans right now, right? Some people aren't getting you know, equal opportunities to vote. Some people aren't getting equal opportunities to go to college. So and once everybody starts feeling like they're more equal, I think they will feel like they're more American. Well, you just can't legislate all social issues. Actually, from like a governmental standpoint, you being on the left and you being on the right, like what is the actual like method or the way forward to fix that in y'all's opinion? Well, definitely stop gerrymandering. I feel like uh, the reason when I say people's voices aren't being heard is because politics is being played and you've got like, if you take a look at Texas, you look at, take a look at like Dan Crenshaw's district and stuff like that. It's not cut to benefit anybody but his political platform, right? And you can say that about different places. In my neighborhoods, it's mostly cut to Democrat. They're always gonna, you're gonna know that in the inner city, it's gonna be mostly Democrat. You're gonna probably have black mayors, you're gonna have black city councilmen. So when you say gerrymandering, where it's kind of like, it's like say mostly red, but really have a lot of blue, and that blue is being cut into gerrymandering, so, but those voices are heard. So they can vote, like I say, they wanna vote for their favorite mayor, things of that nature, it happens. I mean, we've seen, everything blamed on certain groups of people, especially in the last four years. Oh, it's Antifa, oh, it's, oh, it's Black Lives Matter, oh, it's this and that. And I feel like w until that, that's, that's also cutting us apart. We ran out of time, but like, Black Lives Matter, that, unless you're one of the most racist people in the country, you agree with that statement. Right, right. you gotta have the conversation. Never yeah. not have the conversation. Yeah. That's what I hate when people don't wanna have the conversation either because like I so said, some people, they don't want to feel like they're racist or they just don't want to feel uncomfortable. No, you got to have the uncomfortable situation. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Conversations. So we yeah. solved it. <laughs> we need conversations. Want to know. <laughs> All right. I guess I'll live up to being a centrist and pick the one in the middle. Let's do it. All right. How do we ensure private social media companies are having a positive impact on America? Oh, so censorship. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel like y'all are really going to go at it. I'm trying not to.
Like, I've recently just been to Facebook jail, mm -hmm. but it wasn't nothing political I posted about. It was just saying an offhand comment, I mean, comment and I got put in jail. And I'm like, y'all some pansies. Like, what's going <laughs> on? Like, what, this, the thing this, is, I come at it from a bit of a weird perspective because one of the jobs I've had in the past is as a content moderator for Facebook and Instagram. Same company. Oh, it's your fault. Okay. <laughs> I left after a year. You can't blame us on it. <laughs> we know who to call now. Yeah, the one thing that kind of disturbs me that I see is that they have the fact checkers on it, which, yeah, they serve a purpose, but I don't want the company that or the social media platform themselves telling me this is true, this is false, because that can easily be manipulated. Easy, but like, I have no problem with a fact check. Fact check is the reason that we've been able to stop so much COVID misinformation. But people still have the right to say whatever they want. So if you're yeah. making a statement that, you know, COVID can be resolved by, by I don't know, some at-home drink, that is not true information. You, during the time of a pandemic, you are giving irresponsible information out. Positive. That's when we have negative effects where we've got people that are, won't even take uh, medical community's advice over some random post on Facebook where you don't even know where it originated from. I want an independent third party doing it. You want something to come into Facebook and fact check instead of Correct. Facebook doing Facebook the fact Facebook is going to be okay with that? These private companies that you guys, I don't know. Well, no, I'm, I'm not saying <laughs> that, that these people will be affiliated with them. Let's just say there's a company. It's like consultants. Yeah, well, let's say they're, they're a nonprofit and they just, their job is to sure. go, like, and let's say, go into social media sure. and correct medical misinformation. Okay. But I think it's, the solution is leaving those platforms if you don't want to be censored, getting on different platforms. I think that is the perfect solution. I don't know about y'all. I mean, you still have, to say you have your choice. If you don't yeah. like it, you just leave. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They have the same right any other company It's like does. TV shows. Yeah. I don't like this show. You should shut it. Like, just don't watch it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the power of a boycott. Like, if I don't like that XYZ social media company's policies are the way they are. Yeah, move it along. Yeah, you can get off yeah. of it. Yeah. Don't stop me from having a good time. Yeah, but it, at the same time, you know, I can say, like, I don't support that they do this. Right. Fair enough. Yeah, I, but I, you know, I don't want government regulation on it. So we're on the same page there. Yeah, pretty much. I think certain, we'd all agree certain on Certain things yeah. I would like, like I said, fact checks, but I don't mm -hmm. believe in, in full censorships of people's yeah, opinions. Yeah, no censorship. Yeah. Right now. See what we got. Whew, all right. How do we get Americans to care more about policies than Trump Biden bashing? Oh, thank God, this question. It matters more why they're in there and what their ideas are. Yeah, the policies they have. Guys, I'm saying more about the policies. It's pretty much don't worry about the politician himself. Worry about what policies they bring. We can start talking about people when it gets down to primaries. Especially season. when they get elected. It's like, okay, yeah. you're elected, now you're finna get bashed. Like, right. you know, <laughs> okay. Well, let me ask about this, like in relation to the extreme ends of the parties, like on your side, some QAnon nut job, and on your side, some, you know, blue haired girl walking around a college campus. <laughs> not, not, not. What's wrong <laughs> like, with that? But well, what I'm saying, there's nothing wrong with it. I, I dyed my hair pink one time, you know, it's okay. We all make mistakes, but you know, do you think most of the hate is coming from the extremes and just getting projected to everyone? Cause that's what it looks like to me. Squeaky wheel gets the group. Yeah, 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 squeaky wheel gets also the camera time. Like said, oh. The extremes are the loudest. And that's where we get the camera time. That's where we get to play. You didn't mm. have this before though. You didn't we, have we, it. We, we, there is a very divisive situation that we were just in. Oh, yeah. What do we do is go back to what we used to do is focusing on the policies and stop buying branded flags of people to, <laughs> to put on our cars and on our, I don't know, our trucks, whatever, whatever have you. Just, we're not in a fan club here. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're voting for people and policies that literally affect every single American every day. That's that's it. We about the trucks and everything. You said the trouble, but we had it for Obama too. Like it was like awesome change. I, didn't, I awesome did not. Bit. Excuse me, no I did not. Obama <laughs> was like being like his biggest fan, waving his Nobody's flag around. Flag. I don't Obama I don't have a well, you know, no one. But I'm just saying. That, I, no, I'm saying like, it, but no, I'm saying like, it, I it, like this guy. Yeah. I'll vote for him. Yeah, like you no, know I'm saying in my community, we had flags. I said those bottom, like yeah, say. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, there's no more real politicians running for office. It's all about no, personality. It's personality based, and that's what that question was about. Yeah, like it, it, policy is not supposed to be personality. That 100%. comes after you get elected. But what are you going to do? Yeah. So that's what it is. Uh, She's gonna do the same. Do I'm it. gonna pick from the left, so what are you talking about? <laughs> Switch it up. All righty. How do we give voters a louder voice in Washington when corporations can buy unlimited access to politicians? Yeah, we need to get money out of politics. I agree. Even today, like just to run a local race, you got to raise at least 
fifty thousand or a hundred thousand dollars. I'm like, this shouldn't be like this just to run for like city council. I don't think corporations should have any say in politics. I think they should just kind of stay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> stay doing business. I agree. And like, I don't know if we'll ever be able to get lobbyists completely out, but yeah. I'd support some measures like getting rid of Citizens United. You know, corporations aren't people. Well, they do say call your state representatives. State representatives. Wait, I mean, I've tried uh, calling several times about mm -hmm. certain things. I don't get called back. So how, do I feel like an American citizen that is uh, being heard? No. Um, you know, and I feel like a lot of other people are feeling that way, too. So but, to tie it back to corporations, what would y'all say, would y'all, I, I know it's a, a bipartisan issue that most people support, but would y'all be okay with term limits for senators and absolutely. representatives? Yes, absolutely. Like, I don't know what I'd say that limit is, whether it's two or three terms, whatever, like, that's the nitty gritty. See, if we want to stop the money getting into D.C., yes. yeah. because that person's been in office for so long, they know yeah. who to get picked, like, hey, uh, if I give you this, can you stay? Because they know, okay, this is my resource. Mm -hmm. I can go to this person because I got all this money. But if they're gone after six, 10 years, they got to try to find somebody new to buy off or whatever. But if, they, if, if it's always a revolving door, that's how you stop mm -hmm. the money out of D.C. Yep. yep. So that's why we need term limit. Yeah, all right, here we go. Do, 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 do. How do we get more Americans to vote? We rank towards the bottom of developed countries. Yeah. I don't care if they're red area, blue area, purple area, rural, mm -hmm. rural, suburban, urban. Get the message out there. Like, there's ways to do it. There's media, and you know, you get the old people by putting on the news, the young people by putting on social media. There, there needs to be better and more, like, systemized ways to get it. I can tell, like, people know when to vote. It's, like, see, working campaigns, yeah, it's, it's, it's more, as they say, sexier when it comes to presidential, even sometimes the midterm, because that's when people care about. So that's when they end up being down ballot. But we just, like, the word is out there. Like, you know, this is the day to go vote. They put on the news, it just, people are lazy. I had people asking me on my social media, like, what is Proposition 1? What is Proposition 2? How do I vote? Like, they're written in a language that's not for the common voter, that's not for somebody that's going to be motivated to vote. Why would I go if I don't know what these nine propositions mean and I vote for something that's against my own interest? Mm -hmm. It not, should not be for these propositions or these politicians. It should be for the people. I know a lot of people that only vote once every four years for the president. Right. And I know less that vote every two years, and I know way less that vote in the odd years, too. I forget which country is. It's either Australia or New Zealand has a thing where everyone has to vote. I don't support something like that because there's sometimes, gen, you know, if you genuinely have no candidate that you want to support in an right. election. No dog in the hunt. Yeah. You know, I agree. I don't mind having a, like, a real national day of vote. Like, nobody goes to work. Your job I agree with that. I'm cool. To go vote. Yes, yeah. I agree. Make it a national holiday. You know, Completely. Encourage I, voting. I, voting I, holiday. And voting holiday. Make, it, make it easier to access information about each of the things you're voting for or the yes. edits you're voting for. Done. That's what you do. Before the timer this time. Yeah, before <laughs> the timer. <laughs> Boom. We did it. That's the first <laughs> one. First one. We're, We're two thirds of the way through. All right, y'all. Let's do it. Good. Picking from the center again. Every guy. How do we get members of the House of Representatives to work together to pass bipartisan legislation? We have to get back to making bipartisan not a bad word. Because right now, it's all about the extremists. We got to get extremists out of politics so we can have these civil conversations. What do y'all think about ex expanding the number of members in the House? Because I know that's the thing that people have brought up. I mean, As a Republican, we need less government. Not no government, less, let's, let's make it smaller. <laughs> well, but here's the thing. You, you want less government. Maybe politicians representing less people. You want less gerrymandering. Wouldn't a great solution be to expand the House? Let there be, like, let's say instead of 435 members, let's say we make it one member for every I'm just throwing out a number here, 100,000 people. I think that's a good yeah, solution. But, you, but how realistic is it? But he said, but he already got the but blame. Once again, <laughs> people still change. You change your political affiliation, then you're going to end up piling in a super majority of one side or another. Because, like, it's a double edged sword. Like, so mm -hmm. You want to expand more, make more, put more in there, but then what if all those people in those districts, those 2,000 people, end up being like all blue or all red? If you get a district that votes 95% the same way, then that member of Congress represents 95% of his constituents. That's better to me than a 51-49 split. It's healthy that we have those. It's yeah, good that those because, places like exist. Said, but some districts are just, this is strictly going to be blue. This is strictly going to be red. 
So what's our solution? Is uh, more representatives, or I don't know if that's the solution. I don't know. We, I don't know if he agreed with it. He kind of so go ahead real quick. What are y'all's like actual like practical solution to it? That's a good one. That's a that's a start. Do you have one I, that you I, like better though? N not particularly. That's, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I'm just all for making bipartisanship not a bad word no more. Yeah, that's definitely yes, that's yes. something I'm on board it's, it's with. A Speak from the right this time. The okay, last one. slide it this way. Bipartisanship. Yeah, you have to pick left. <laughs> I am pick left, right. and of course you're going to be in the middle. <laughs> How do we restore trust in elections? I think it starts at the top a lot of times yes. because if you have the guy you voted for, not just someone in Congress, but the guy in that election you voted for saying that there was fraud, well, of course people are going to believe that. Doesn't matter if it's true or not, people are going to believe it just because their guy's saying that. When you break some trust, just even on a personal level, Mm -hmm. It's always hard to win back. And I think we've had, again, the misinformation campaigns that have been out there that have, you know, like, oh, it was a rigged. You've got politicians saying things were rigged. We need to start abandoning that conversation and start focusing on the future. People on the right, we're going to vote. So we can say, okay, he did win. Oh, we're going to win. We're trying to win. So we are going to vote. Yeah, we're going to him and ha, but like I said, those people, they're going to go back and vote to show that, oh, yeah, this happened. Vote. Well, some people that may be on the left, sometimes I've heard people on the left, I'm just not going to vote anymore. They said yeah. that when Trump won the first time, I'm going to see, this ain't about us. They ain't listening. Like, no, he won. Let's encourage voting, allow audits, but then be clear about it. Hey, there was fraud, and we need to look into it. Or, hey, there wasn't fraud. And it's time it. to move on. Yeah, yeah, we'll and to keep it going right. and just keep it straight facts vote and let's keep yes. making right. this country yes. amazing. I, I was ready for you to say great. I was ready for you. And I, I stopped. I, 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 I stopped that so fast. You will not like, get You got because, close. Oh, I, I saw the blip in your head. Never. You was like, make this country. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Amazing. I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> All right, last one, guys. Let me go to do it right. Uh, let's see what we got. What he we said got. do it right. From the right. What steps can we agree on to stop America from leading the world in gun deaths? Mm -hmm. I mean, I could talk all day about this, but I, I would really, really want to hear what you have to say. About it. <laughs> I mean, in my ideal world, which in context, I, it does not exist. Yeah, there's ideal have, versus practical. Right. right. We don't need guns here. In a practical world, we have to respect that we have a Second Amendment and people have the right to bear arms. Um, I think. Uh, we should have some buyback programs for, um, you know, guns that have more than uh, 10 bullets in the chamber. I don't think we need automatic rifles. All the mass shootings that have been happening recently have been, that's been the gun of cho choice, are the ARs. Um, Can I just butt in yes, real quick? Yes, because absolutely. I'm a guy in the middle, but my name is Hunter. I do hunt. Of course. So, uh, and, you know, the thing is with the, you know, having 10 bullets or more chambered, there are some weapons that can do that, but not many of them are handguns. They're mostly long guns. So if you, you know, if you do an automatic weapons ban, you're not really banning much of anything that people have. I mean, we can't just stop protection of guns because in the end, you can get a gun anywhere. Like I said, it comes to the kids. I hate that the kids are being shot up. But then, like I said, in my neighborhood, you, we say they're bringing up Chicago. I'm from Baton Rouge and New Orleans. Gun deaths all the time. How do we stop those deaths? Those deaths don't get publicized a lot like these kids could but we got, I want to stop those too, because I hate people who look like me getting shot all the time for no reason. And so your solution? Is that we need to, start, like I said, hopefully we can help them with the situation. Like I said, bullying has been like the big campaign now. It has been stop bullying. Bullying has been going on since I've been, the 70s, I've been 60s, bullied. Right, saying you're bullying. never going to stop bullying. Yeah. You're never going to stop bullying. How do we stop? How we stop the first How case. do we stop America gun from leading in gun the world in gun deaths? That's the point. My we solutions. Go. Like you said, charge people if they illegally, or sorry, charge the gun owner if the person who shoots illegal, illegally obtains it. Like you said, we need to have better health, mental health resources. And like I said, I want metal detectors in the front of every school and I want armed police officers in the school, SRO officers, and potentially increasing the budget for that and having more of them. Uh, like I said, like I said, I, I actually agree with everything. Like I said, we, but we also have that. We have, you have to register your guns. We have to have the mental health checks. Cause like I said, you just don't, like I said, some people come out of jail, you can't get a gun no more. So we do have all these places, and I do like the metal detectors, but there's really no, I can't really give them come with a solution. Like I said, you can get a gun anywhere. If we just stop production on guns, that might be the only way. Like, okay, these are only guns left in the world, but we can't stop that. But is that a solution that you're actually willing to make, though? 
I'm really, I'm really I am. But like I said, you still have the right to have that gun, though. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts on his answer? The fact that you guys didn't really come to the I didn't expect there to be a solution on this one. Cheers. To not killing each other today. <laughs> And towards you not drinking alcohol. I'm sorry. <laughs> Y'all can keep on that corona path. <laughs> People are going to ask why you're not drinking alcohol. I just don't drink. I'm a very conservative liberal. <laughs> you're a very liberal conservative. Yeah, you are. <laughs> so we're not just a bunch of lame old people. Like, no, we actually could do this. Like, it'd be fun. Don't have a drink with me. Like I said, if I can't have a drink with you, I don't want to do it with you. And I don't mind drinking Coke with you. There you go. Appreciate it. Okay, so I have a question about women's rights. Um, how do you feel about women, uh, the, all these new bans that are coming down potentially on women needing or getting abortions? For me, I was a pro-choice person at one time, but then doing data, looking up and finding out that more African-American are being aborted more than anybody else. And like I said, we make such a small population of this country, yet more of us was being aborted. That's what I thought to be more pro-life, because then that child should be here. This is a gift. Now, granted, this might be a controversial take, but I, I am pro-choice when it comes to rape and incest, because like I said, children are a gift, so if you are, it shouldn't be forced upon you. You know, whether you're a fan of abortion or not, I know, you know, most people recognize it as a sad procedure, but, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think we have the right to legislate that you cannot have a medical procedure. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the biggest thing that divides you all from each other and not being able to work together? I think it's the, the me versus we perception. I think, I think, some of us are working for the we, for what works for everybody, and some are worried about their individual rights and how it affects them. And I think because of those two totally different outlooks on how we should approach life, that it's very difficult to kind of speak each other's language. Fair enough. No, like she summed it up perfectly. It is to me, like I said, we're all about individualism. Like, hey, my right, I have the right to do this, that, and the other, and leave me alone. Mm -hmm. But like I said, some people just want to be told, hey, this is what you're supposed to do, yada, yada, yada. With, when it comes to African Americans, the Democrat Party gets 99, basically 80 to 90 percent of their vote. But what has the policies on the left of helped the African-American community. So there's a lot of things that the, the left needs to do. I, I'm not going to sit here and say that we've done anything incredibly great, but we have fought for you know their voting rights. We have fought for people of color uh, to be represented more equally for um, you know acceptance of the LGBTQIA communities. So for are they doing everything they possibly can? I wouldn't say so. But are they making bigger strides than 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 other parties? I would I would say they're doing a decent job. Yeah, I think y'all are perfect examples of the left and the right. Like I'm glad that y'all were the two people here with me. And I'm so glad you were the buffer in the middle because I don't know how well it would have gone. <laughs> it was my worst nightmare that they were going to give me some extremists on both you sides. You do. I am an extreme leftist. Like but, surprise. Okay, but, but it, you, it could be a lot worse. <laughs> I could have the blue hair. <laughs> Well, I think the best part of today's conversation was at the very end. Uh, we asked some questions that were burning in our mind, uh, be it about abortion or working together, or you know, even the gun rights issue. And I think that we actually got somewhere with those, and those were the last questions I was expecting to make progress on. Oh, what about other sides? Like I said, they are passionate in their beliefs, just like I am on mine. What I learned today about the, uh, he's looking at me. <laughs> That's why I started laughing. I feel the conversation was great. Having, like I said, having people on different ends and, like I said, in the middle to come together and just finally have a conversation. That's what's missing in today's world. Like, people don't want to sit down and actually talk anymore. Uh, got anymore. me to see, like I said, got me to see a, it, the subject in a new light. I think this is a really good example of how other conversations across the country could go. You know, it's hard to get people from opposite sides to sit down, but when we do, it's kind of surprising how well it can turn out. We're going to go have drinks. If you want to pour some whiskey in that, go for it. Hey. hey. <laughs> Look, it's still delicious.